Madam Beate Trekman as a country director UNTP. For Madam Beate Trekman, please welcome to the stage. Dr. Imran Bulkin, Deputy Minister for Regional uh, Development and Local Autonomy at uh, Bapanas. Ms. Ilen Tan, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation. Her Excellency, Ms. Erna Vian Valdez, Ambassador of Cuba to Indonesia. His Excellency, Ambassador Makarim Wibisono of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Honorable Mayors, representatives from Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, the Philippines, and Malaysia. A very good morning to all of you. Salamat pagi, as we say here in Indonesia. It is my great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of UNDP Indonesia to the ASEAN Forum meeting on South-South Cooperation. I want to welcome in particular the participants who have come from other parts of Indonesia as well as from other countries in the region. A special welcome to our colleagues from Thailand. We're very happy that you could make it despite the challenging uh, situation in your home country. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, South South and trilateral cooperation are becoming very important tools for development, especially as countries from the South become more powerful economically and politically. The 2013 edition of UNDP's flagship Human Development Report was dedicated to the rise of the South and provided some interesting evidence on the dramatic shift in power that is currently taking place. Did you know, for example, that for the first time in 150 years, the combined gross domestic product of the three leading economies in the developing world, Brazil, China, and India, equal the combined GDP of the long-standing industrial powers of the North, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, the UK, and the United States. In contrast, in 1950, Brazil, China, and India together represented only 10% of the world economy, while the six traditional economic leaders of the North accounted for more than half in improving income, health, and education of their people. And Indonesia is in the top 10 list of countries that have seen the fastest improvement over the last 40 years. As an illustration, from, 20, uh, from 2000 to 2012, the average annual HDI growth for ASEAN middle-income countries such as Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Malaysia outpaced the top four HDI nations, Norway, Australia, the United States, and the Netherlands. What this tells us is that in some respect, the world is becoming less unequal. Although we know, of course, that we can't simply look at global averages, we also have to look within countries where we know that there are still huge inequalities between the rich and the poor. Ladies and gentlemen, with the growing economic pro prominence of the South, it's fair to say that the South can now offer solutions for the South. Over the last few years, we have all come to realize that countries do not only have to look to the North to find answers to their development challenges. They can also look to the South. They can look to their neighbors and other countries that have similar experiences. Indonesia, with UNDP support, has also recently undertaken a stock, undertaken a stock taking exercise and strategic review of its role in South-South cooperation. This review has generated some very useful pointers for our discussion here. Regionally, UNDP has supported similar reviews, for example, in Thailand, and the messages are clear and are similar. Let me articulate a few for you. First, as with all development cooperation, absolutely fundamental to the success of South-South cooperation 
is a process of design and implementation that fosters ownership. We need to look at the need of the recipient countries in South-South exchanges and ensure that the recipient country is firmly in the driver's seat. The recipients need to clearly articulate what they need and how they need it. The providers need to shape their exchanges around these needs. South-South cooperation is therefore very much a two-way street where both partners share and receive knowledge and experience. A second key point emerging from this stock-taking exercise is that we need to clearly define the results we want to achieve. South-South cooperation is not only about exchanges and study tours and workshops. It must lead to knowledge and ideas that can be used to improve the development condition of a country or a province as a whole. And we need to work with this in mind and find ways to monitor the impact from South-South cooperation efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, the work you're all involved in is critical. This is one of the first times that countries have come together to discuss the role of sub-national entities in South-South cooperation. Traditionally, the focus is on the national level. You are helping to test and pioneer new approaches and ideas, and I want to congratulate all of you for this. There are a lot of social and cultural similarities between the countries here today. This provides a strong basis for collaboration. In addition, many good practices occur at the sub-national level and can be shared not only with other provinces and districts within one country, but also with other provinces and districts across countries. Ladies and gentlemen, approaching the 2015 deadline, the world is taking stock how much progress has been made in the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals. And the heads of stage are currently engaging in the formulation of the new Global Development Goals for the post-2015 period that will guide the international development agenda for the next 15 to 20 years to come. Again, here the ASEAN community has a key role to play in shaping the future development framework. South-South cooperation is a key modality for delivery, a key aspect of the how of implementing the post-2015 agenda. UNDP, as the largest agency of the United Nations system, is ready to continue serving as a broker in the post-2015 setup to connect countries to knowledge and expertise and serve as a convener of partners for governments, civil society and multinational companies to share experiences. With our worldwide network, we believe we can offer what countries need to facilitate learning and capacity building through South-South cooperation. We look forward to continue playing this role in the context of ASEAN in Indonesia and beyond and are indeed honoured to be part of this important event as a milestone to expand South-South and trilateral cooperation within ASEAN. Finally, let me thank the ASEAN Foundation and Bapanas for co-organizing this event with us. We do hope that the two-day meeting will meet your expectations and open opportunities for further collaboration and cooperation. Last but not least, let me again extend a very warm welcome to all participants to Indonesia. I hope that aside from the workshop proceedings, you will find a little bit of time to enjoy J Jakarta. Your visit, in fact, comes at an opportune moment with the rainy season having finally ended to allow you to explore the experience the food, the culture and the warmth of the Indonesian people. So with that, Salamat Datang, welcome as we say in Bahasa Indonesia and Terima Kasih. Thank you. Thank you all very much and uh, I wish you good to attend. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will continue our first session uh, for our first session for this meeting today. Before I welcome uh, Mr. Ahmad Rofi from NAM CSSTC. 
Once again, everybody, welcome to Mr. Ra Ahmad Rafi. Thank you. Excellencies, honorable guests, distinguished participants. Assalamualaikum <coughs> warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. Following the official opening of this bookshop, I think this is uh, time to make our sessions a bit informal. I think that through the informal sessions, the productivity of our sharing of knowledge and experiences of the development works that we have developed ourselves in our country might be more productive. And uh, since we have uh, an ample time to have one hour and a half, so I would like to present the case of NAM CSSCC, slow but sure. Just step by step, and I hope that uh, my presentation will be clear. In the meantime, if you have something to intervene me during the presentations that need to be clarified, then just raise your hand. So to make uh, the sessions more closer, so we can uh, more productively share our experiences and knowledge of the development works. And uh, we start this session with the experiences of the NAM CSSCC that has been developed some years ago and doing a lot of works on the development programs for developing countries through capacity building and uh, sharing of our experiences. You see that uh, the establishment of uh, NAM CSSCC which stands for Non-Line Movement Center for South South Cooperation is actually basically to promote the capacity building and for South countries through sharing of knowledge and skills on partnership basis. So we always conduct the program through the partnership scheme either between the countries with the international organizations, with the NGOs, civil society, whatever. As long as it is dedicated to encourage the development works becoming better and more fruitful to the people. Before we go into a bit detail on the NAM CSSCC, I would like to go back in 1955 where the Afro Asian Conference was held in Bandung, West Java, Indonesia. So we see that a significant milestone in the development of NAM, this is a non land movement was the 1955 Bandung Conference, a conference of Asian and African states hosted by the Indonesian President Sukarno at the time, and the attending nations declared their desire not to become involved in the Cold War and adopted the declarations on promotion of world peace and cooperation. It was only in the 1961 and to it, NAM members has 120, covering from Latin America and Caribbean regions to African region to Asian region. Even we have one member for, from Europe region, which is Belarus, country Belarus. The purpose of the organization of NAM, as stated in the Havana Declaration of 1979, is to ensure the national independence, sovereignty, ter territorial integrity, and security of non-aligned countries. For promoting and accelerating development in developing worlds. They also acknowledge the center as complementary to the existing center of the non-aligned movement, as well as being an integral part of the endeavors of the movement to strengthen South South Cooperation. There are several NAM centers. Don Duat here, I would like to show you in Cuba, for example, there's a NAM center for tropical medicines. 
in North Korea, also under medicines, uh, herbal medicines. And how about the missions? The missions of NAM CSSCC is contributes to the acceleration and enhancements of national development by strengthening and expanding South South technical cooperation in the context of international development cooperation. So we don't ex we, 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 we explicitly state that the South South cooperation is not to replace North South cooperation, but South South cooperation is to complement with the North South cooperation. That's why we try to strengthen and expand South South cooperation within the context of international development, within also the system of North South relations. But the key role that should be played within this scheme must be the South cooperation. And the most beneficial benefits of the working together is also dedicated, more dedicated to the developing countries. And it is fortunate that all ASEAN member countries is the member of NAM. And uh, the NAM CSACC is dedicated not only for the NAM member countries, but also for the non-member countries of NAM. So as we mentioned earlier, that it is dedicated for developing countries. And the objective of the establishment of the NAM CSSTC is to enhance capacity building to achieve the development goals of developing countries in attaining sustained people-centered development to enable developing countries to participate more actively and equally in the process of globalization. <coughs> we are having the booth over there, NAM CSSTC, the most right side of this building, and uh, later, you may visit this booth, also along with the other booths, and just to check the programs that we have been conducted so far, and the opportunity of, of our countries, how to participate, how to develop our cooperation through the facilities that already uh, have by, provided by the NAMS. Hello, good morning. My name is Amy. I'm representing Malaysia. Um, my question is about your uh, expert. One of the um, mode of operation that you do is dispatch and also exchange of experts. I'm wondering um, um, whether you have these experts are your in-house experts or you also uh, utilize uh, local experts from those countries that you work with. And I'm also wondering whether this list of experts are available. You know, what are the fields? What do they do? So uh, just for you know, for us to also search in, in case we need their expertise. However, once we have, uh, we are planning to do a program like this. As I told you, that it is under the cooperation part with the others. We discuss this expert. And what we have, we open on the table, this is the expert that we have. It means that we should do uh, policy with the other institutions. When we talk on the renewable energy, for example, we invite expert coming from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, and also with the uh, associations of the renewable energy, like the Micro Hydro Association, Association of Biogas, and other like so this is the private sector. So we observe the affinity of experts in the relevant uh, subject. This is one thing. The second thing is that we also uh, mobilize, we ask also the local experts doing these activities, even they don't speak English, but we interpret what we are doing, what they explain to the uh, participants of the activities. So it is open for we just actually, the management and actually just facilitated them. Just to facilitate for the program, also for the software. Thank you.